Well, hey everybody, how are you guys doing out there? My name is Cameron. I'm one of the student pastors here at Bayside. And man, I'm so excited to be here with you guys. Such an honor to be able to spend some time with you guys, even if it is on the internet with y'all. And hey, man, I know right now we're in these crazy times and there's so much uncertainty out there. I know there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of doubt. There's a lot of worry. And I know you guys are hearing all about that. And I just wanna encourage you guys with a word today something that specifically spoke to me recently. So I'm reading in the book of Acts right now, and, and I'll be honest, it's not because I'm an amazing pastor, but it's because I realize I need to learn more about the Bible, to be honest with you. So here I am in the book of Acts, just taking it slow, taking notes, reading and, and understanding. And my wife kind of makes fun of me because at night I lay in bed and I get like all geeked out about, you know, Philip and Peter and John and what they're doing and the places they went. And she's like, you're such a dork. And it's true, I am a dork. But here's, the, here's what I'm trying to get at. In the book of Acts, there's something specific we read that we could just so easily read over it, ignore it, and kind of move forward with it. But I actually think it applies so much to our lives right here in 2020, right now. I want to read you guys these verses in Acts chapter 8, verses 1 through 6. Before I do, let me give you some context though. So here's Jesus. He's already come to the earth. He's done his miracles. He's died on the cross. He went into the grave and then he was raised back to life and eventually ascended into heaven. Before he did, he left the disciples with a challenge, with a mission, right? The great commission. And he said, I want you to go into the world. I want you to share the good news of salvation through relationship with me. Virtually, he's saying, I want you to teach people about me and about what you've seen and about what you've learned. And you're going to go to Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This is what he virtually commands his disciples to do. And then he ascends into heaven. Well, at this time, the disciples are going to Jerusalem and, and that's where Jesus said they'd begin. But he also commanded that they'd go into the rest of the world, but he doesn't explain how. But here we pick up in chapter 8 of Acts, and we kind of see how that plays out, and it's not exactly how you'd imagine. So chapters one, or verses 1 through 6, here's what it says in chapter 8. A great wave of persecution began that day, sweeping over the church in Jerusalem. And all the believers, except the apostles, were scattered through regions of Judea and Samaria. Some devout men came and buried Stephen with great mourning. Let me take a quick pause. Stephen was one of the first martyrs just before this verse. He was actually killed. He was stoned to death for preaching the good news of Jesus in the temple. Let's pick back up. But Saul was going everywhere to destroy the church. He went from house to house, dragging out both men and women to throw them into prison. But the believers who were scattered preached the good news about Jesus wherever they went. Philip, for example, went to the city of Samaria and told the people there about the Messiah. Crowds listened intently to Philip because they were eager to hear his message and see the miraculous signs he did. Okay, how does this apply? Jesus told them they should go into all the world. In fact, he said Judea and Samaria and then all the world and preach this good news. But he never told them how to do that. He never told them the plan. He never came up with that plan. But here we see it play out, and it absolutely doesn't go the way you'd think. The, the disciples, the, the believers, they only go out into the world because they're scattered, because of they're, they're afraid. Here they're in fear of, of their own lives. This guy Saul is coming door to door, pulling men and women out, putting them in jail, putting them in prison, even to some degrees murdering them for their faith, for their belief in Jesus Christ. They're afraid for their lives. But I love that it continues tells us that they're also very proud of the message of Jesus Christ. So wherever they go, they preach the good news. They preach the message of Jesus. Guys, this is exactly how the church grew. As persecution came on them, they scattered and it grew. And everywhere they went, they told the good news. They told everybody about it. And we see specifically Philip goes to Samaria and that's just an amazing explosion of belief there. People come in and they start to see the goodness of God and the salvation that is in Jesus. That would have never been possible if persecution, if pressure, if uncertainty and difficult times hadn't come their way. We don't know. We don't know if we would be here today. We could still be practicing some ancient religious ceremony if Philip 
and Peter and John hadn't made the trek to Samaria. How does this apply to us today? Here's the reality. Guys, I know that each and every one of us, man, we're walking through it. We're feeling it in different ways. You might be feeling it because you're ready to graduate and you're worried if you're gonna graduate and you don't know what that looks like and you're excited about college, but uh, am I gonna go to college? Is there college? I don't know. You're, you're, you're in a place like I'm in a place, like we're all in a place of complete uncertainty. The whole world is in this place. And even without this COVID-19 virus going around, guys, the reality is we're always in a place of uncertainty. Just before all of this, as I talk with my students down at our campus, man, I hear all the time, man, I just don't know what's next. I don't know what God has for me. I, I wish I was aware of the plan that he had for my life. I wish I knew what was right. But the reality is this, we don't always know. And that's okay. Because just like this story here we read in Acts, guys, we learn God had a big picture plan. And I promise you that in that moment, those disciples didn't see God's big picture plan. The believers in those moments, they felt worry, they felt fear, they felt anxiety. It's just a natural part of life. However, in hindsight, we see, you and I, that God ultimately had something so amazing. I wanna share a quote that I found from uh, uh, AmericanMagazine.org. It's actually a quote in a quote, so it's kind of like quote inception. But it says this, Soren Kierkegaard said, Soren Kierkegaard was like a philosopher, theologian, you know. Soren Kierkegaard said that we live forward, but understand backward. I'll explain that in a second. This certainly applies to Philip and the other characters in Acts. The entirety of God's plan for them comes into focus only through hindsight. What in the world does this mean? So this guy, Soren Kierkegaard, is saying, we live forward, which is kind of basic. We haven't figured out how to go back in time. We can only go forward in time. Everybody lives that way. However, we only begin to understand how all the pieces play a part as time goes on. Once the story has been unfolded, we can look back in hindsight and go, oh, that's why this happened. That's why X, Y, and Z situation worked out the way it did. This has been the case in my life, and I bet that if you take a moment and look back on yours, it's the same way. I wanna encourage you, God has a plan for your life. You're not alone in this fight. It's not just random on a whim, hopefully you end up in the right place, no. He's got a plan and a purpose just for you. And I don't just mean that for everybody. Individually, we've all got a story. And I love one of the last things Jesus said before he left the earth, he told his disciples, he said that, hey, I want you to go into the world. I want you to make disciples of many nations. And he said, remember this, I will be with you always, even till the end of the age. I also want you to know you are not alone. Jesus walks with you through this. He never promised us an easy life, but he promised that we would be with him, that he would be with us every single step of the way. I hope this encourages you right now with whatever it is that you're walking through. I want you to know that we're praying for you we love you, and we know that God has something special for you, even in these difficult times. Well, hey, uh, real quick, what I wanna do is I wanna actually put your attention on what's happening next. Right after this, we're gonna dive into our Zoom calls. We would love to see you guys there. Let me pray. God, I thank you so much for everybody tuning in. I thank you so much for each individual story as you lay it out, as you pen the words, as you write the story. God, I know that you are ultimately in control, even though day by day, it might not always seem that way. God, I pray that you would help give us perspective, help us see in hindsight that you are in control and that your plan is happening. Lord, we love you and we trust you even in these difficult times. Amen. Hey, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys next time.